our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Standing before you is Miriam Mota, a born again child of God. I've been tasked since today to encourage us with a word on offering. And I thank God for this opportunity, saints, and thank Muruti, Mamruti, and the leadership for this opportunity. Amen. May you come with me to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 8, and I'll read it from verse 1 in the NLT version. Now I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, what God in his kindness has done through the church in Macedonia. They are being tested by many troubles and they are very poor, but they are also filled with abundant joy, which has overflowed in rich generosity. For I can testify that they gave not only what they could afford, but far more. And they did it out of their own free will, which is the topic of my offering message, giving out of own free will. Please note that they gave out of their own free will. Verse 4, they begged us again and again for the privilege of sharing in the gift for the believers in Jerusalem. So this verse is saying, Giving is a privilege, Bazalwana. They wanted to share in this privilege. Verse 5, they even did more than we had hoped, for their first action was to give themselves to the Lord and to us, just as God wanted them to do. Verse 6, so we have asked Titus, who encouraged your giving in the first place, to return to you and encourage you to finish this ministry of giving. So giving is a ministry according to this verse. Verse 7, since you excel in so many ways in your faith, you, you, your gifted speakers, your knowledge, your enthusiasm, and your love from us, I want you to also excel in this gracious act of giving. Verse 8, I am not commanding you to do this, but I am testing how genuine your love is by comparing it with the eagerness of the other churches. Amen. So saints, you know, as you go through the Bible, you'll find that there are so many different types of, uh, of, of giving for different occasions. So in my view, when I, if I can group them into two, I picked up that giving could be classified into two main categories, which is the required giving as well as free will giving. You know, required giving encompasses all sorts of giving from tithing to giving, you know, for building and the various church activities. And, you know, for instance, we saw in Exodus chapter 25 where Moses wanted to build the tabernacle for the Lord and God told him to ask the children of Israel to give towards the building the temple. So it was required of them to give towards, um, to, towards the, 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 the temple. And out of their own free will, if we look at free will uh, offering, Cain and Abel gave nobody ask them to give to the Lord. You can read that in Genesis chapter 4. And we see in Genesis chapter 8, Noah after at the end of the flood, as he stepped out of the ark, he wanted to build an altar to the Lord so that he can give an offering. Amen. So if you look at all this, Abel, Camel, and Noah, all these givings were voluntary and they were out from the heart. I mean, Noah wanted to show gratitude after God has saved him from, from, the, blood, from the flood. Amen. So in the New Testament, as we have just read in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, it seems to me that, you know, free will is all about love and gratitude. And it is done, done proportionately, sometimes 
sacrificially and voluntarily, as we have just seen. It is up over and above the tithe. Amen. It was there during the pre-Mosaic law, during the Mosaic law up to the time of Jesus Christ. It is still there even today. Amen. So we heard from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 that the Macedonians first gave themselves to the Lord. So meaning that they devoted themselves to the Lord, you know, and out of that devotion to the Lord flowed out their giving. Amen. So they were not coerced by Zalwana. They were not manipulated. They were not bribed. They were not intimidated into their, their, their giving. They gave out of their own heart, you know, and... <clears throat> One thing that, 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 that we cannot do is we can never outgive God. You know, God has a principle that says if you give and it will be given to you, pressed down, shaken together, um, shall men give unto your bosom. The other one says that if you sow bountifully, you will reap bountifully. So in other words, Bazalwana, like I said, we cannot outgive God. Let us, as we are about to give Bazalwana, uh, we should give as the Spirit leads, and we should give out of our own willing and joyful hearts. Amen. And then the, 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 the banking details for those that are online will be shared on the screen, uh, both the banking details and the snap scan. Let us pray, Barcelona. Heavenly Father, we glorify your holy name. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity and a privilege to partake in this ministry of giving. We thank you for giving us the first seed to sow. In the mighty name of Jesus, and in return, we thank you that you are giving us the opportunity to be God's steward, to be steward of that which you have trusted us with. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we bless you, we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Be greeted, saints, in the wonderful name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Noam Sadlamini, and I've been tasked with doing the scripture reading for today. Allow me to acknowledge the pastoral team together with the leadership of the church and to thank them for affording me this opportunity. Our reading for this morning is coming from the book of James, and we'll be reading chapter 1. We'll be reading from verse 1 to verse 18, and we'll be reading in the New King James Version. And it reads as follows. James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation, but the rich in his humiliation, because as a flower of the field he will pass away. For no sooner has the sun risen with a burning heat then it withers the grass. Its flower falls and its beautiful appearance perishes. So the rich man also will fade away in his pursuits. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. 
Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and it comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Thank you. Lagila 
Good morning, Barcelona, and uh, welcome to our Sunday morning service. And uh, God bless you for joining us this morning. And we thank God for the privilege of life. And we continue to pray for those who are still sick from COVID-19 and those who are working hard. We pray that God's hand will be extended to them in Jesus' name. And I just want to take this time to welcome uh, all the uh, our visitors. May God bless you for joining us uh, in this fellowship. Let us start off with a um, word of prayer in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you this uh, morning. We give all the praise, Lord, for enabling us to come together. And so, Father, as we get into your word, we ask you, God, to guide us. We ask you, God, to speak to us. And we're ready to receive from you in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, use my lips in Jesus' name. Amen. As I always do, I believe that um, God wants to strengthen our lives. And I want to start off with uh, some declarations on the basis of uh, John chapter 14, verse 12 to 13. It says in the New King James Version, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do, and greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father, and whatever you ask in my name, I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. So that's, you can just follow me as you say these declarations. I declare and receive God's power over my life. I declare and receive God's power over the ideas of my mind. I declare and receive God's power over the words of my mouth. I declare and receive God's power over the works of my hands. I declare and receive God's power over every territory I will occupy. And if we believe that, say amen in Jesus' name. Repeat them as often as you want to, believing that God is going to empower you and lead you into doing many great things for the kingdom. Amen. This morning I want to talk on the subject, under pressure, faith and endurance grow. Under pressure, faith and endurance grow. And our main scripture is going to be found in James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. But I want to start off by saying, it doesn't matter what job you have, or what privileges and benefits you enjoy, each one of us has to wake up in the morning and struggle to make it through the day. There are many things that we, we go through during the day, and sometimes it's a, it's a massive struggle. It's at work, it is family, it is all sorts of pressures that come upon our lives. Excuse me. There is not even one day that goes by without someone just saying, well, I haven't had anything to deal with. Daily lives are a struggle. And such daily struggles are made worse during a period of pruning. They become worse. Struggles become worse during a period of pruning. We've said many things about this time, but one of the other things which is the Lord has placed in my heart is that this is a period of pruning. And uh, what are the primary indicators of a period of pruning? Uh, primary indicator for a season of pruning is a suffering of loss. It may be loss of any kind. It happens during um, a period of pruning. There may be death. There may be loss of, uh, loss of uh, position at work. It may be loss of finance. It may be loss of business. This is a period of pruning. And a season of pruning brings a loss of finances, possessions, impact, influence, position, stature, relationship, or opportunity. And, and to be pruned 
just like when a tree is being pruned or of its old skin, something has to be lost. And so to be pruned is to lose the basis upon which everyone around you measures you as successful. There's no doubt that there are many people who are going through a period of pruning in this season. So struggles become even worse at the, a, through a period like that. And too often, even when we hear the message of hope that we preach in the gospel, uh, when you're experiencing severe pressure in life, you, we ask, why should being a Christian be so hard? Because we expect that our lives will not experience, will not be subjected to severe pressure because we are children of God. But we are also not spared the severe pressure of this life. But here's one thing I want to say to you. To be a Christian is about endurance through life struggles. As a Christian, you have to learn to endure through life struggles because they are part of our life. And this we see if we go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 to 10. And I'll read it in the New King James Version, where Paul says, But with this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. So Paul says, we experience all sorts of pressures on every side. And Paul says this, being a man of God, a committed Christian, involved in the work of God on a daily basis. But he also acknowledges that life is a struggle. But even in the struggle, there is endurance. So the Christian life is about endurance because what we are experiencing is exactly the kind of life that our Lord Jesus Christ had to go through. He endured so many things, but he remained Christ because life is full of struggle. And the Christian life is about enduring through life struggles. It's not about breaking down. It's about enduring through life struggles. Now, our main scripture in James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4, in the NLT, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when you, your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. I want to read it in the, in the message because I think the message also puts it beautifully in, in contemporary English. And this is what it says in the message. Consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. You know that under pressure, your faith is forced into the open and shows its true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. So James here, James was a slave to God. He worked, to, he worked for the Lord. He is said to, have been, to be the brother of Jesus and was there through the many pains that Christ experienced. He was there to witness Christ die. And he was there when the apostles got together and they plotted how they would carry the work of the gospel forward. He was there when they were threatened with persecution, being jailed and everything. He was there. He knew a life of struggle. So he, he says here that, dear brothers, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. He knew that life is a struggle. But what is interesting here is that he says, troubles of any kind will come your way. There is no limit 
to the number of struggles that we all face. It may be financial struggles, it may be struggles around loss of relatives, it may be issues around our health, it may be rejection, it may be, it may be many things. There is no limit to the number of struggles that we may face. That's why James said, when troubles of any kind come your way, you will face them in this life. There is no even limit to the kind and number of troubles that we'll face. In John chapter 16, verse 33, listen to what Christ says. He says, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart because I've overcome the world. So what Christ is saying here is, is actually, when, when Joy, James speaks about these things, he knows what Christ would have said. He said, even though I'm going to pour out my spirit in you, even though I have taught you, you are still going to experience troubles in this world. You are going to experience many struggles. And that very same condition which Christ was talking about is a condition that we are confronted with. So in the open opening part it says troubles of any kind are going to come our way. So when we face difficult times at this time or at any other time on a daily basis, let us know that even scripture warns us that we will face many troubles in this world. But you know what, it, what then James says is that when troubles of any kind come our way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. And this is quite a fascinating thing. Listen to what it says in the message. It says, consider it a sheer gift, friend, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. It is a gift to be able to go through struggle. This is what James says. It's, it's, it's such a contradiction in terms. When, when you are in trouble, when you are facing struggles, and when you are facing pressure, nobody can ever say, consider it a gift. But there's something quite interesting here. You see, while it, is, it may not be fun to get into trouble or face challenges, we have to see opportunity or opportunities in every kind of challenge that we face. We've got to turn the struggles and say, what opportunity should I see out of this? And then you've got to say, but what is this great joy that James is talking about? Why should I actually view the challenges I face with an element of joy? I want to say to you that the reason why James would say, whenever you face troubles of any kind, you must receive it as an opportunity for great joy. It is because as a child of God, you, we, we, you must must understand that when you get into any trouble, when you get into any challenge, you'll find it must find you anchored in God. Any challenge must find you, your faith anchored in God. Remember what you're talking about here is under pressure, our faith and endurance grows. So the reason why James would say, consider it joy, it is because when you get into trouble, don't forget that you are a person of faith. And don't forget that endurance is a requirement for any Christian and any struggle is meant to grow your endurance and faith. That's why you must count it all joy. And this is what he continues to say in the same verse. He says, so for when, you, for when you know, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So under pressure, your faith is tested. Saints, until something is tested for its quality, you can never tell how good it is. Similarly, until your faith is tested through challenges, you will not know how strong your faith is. That is why you must be joyful when you go through struggle, much as it may be painful, much as it may bring inconvenience, much as it may actually make you uncomfortable. The one positive thing that you must look for as you go through the challenges in our daily life is that your faith will be proved to be strong. Your faith must come, will come out stronger. Your endurance will come out stronger. This is what must bring you joy if you get into struggles, if you get into challenges and you overcome. That is because your faith and your endurance would have been built. Never ever view struggles and challenges outside 
a spiritual context. Everything that happens in your life has a spiritual dimension. Your struggles and your challenges on a daily basis that put you under pressure and stretch you and make you feel like giving up, they are all spiritual matters. That is why when you go through them, don't go through them outside your faith. Get into your struggles with your faith and say, my faith is going to take me through this. My God is going to take me through this. My belief in God is going to take me through the struggle. And when I come out of the struggles, I will be stronger. I would have endured. That's why we count it all joy. Because the strength of our faith is tested and proved through struggles. You see, as they always say, the quality of gold, you don't find it. You don't find gold when it is being dug. It is, you dig something and you find a stone and it has to go through a purification process. And the purification process is not just cold water. It is a blasting furnace of heat pressure to undo the other minerals and leave only pure gold. Such is the testing of our faith through the daily struggles. Under pressure our faith and endurance grows. So what's the other thing that James is saying? Trouble and challenges test our faith. Trouble and challenges cause your faith to grow. And the last thing he says, for know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Trouble and pressure give your endurance a chance to grow. And we'll get to what endurance means. Enduring troubles and temptations brings blessings. Actually, when you endure, you get blessings. And this is what the word says. Let's go to James chapter 1, verse 12 to 15. And it says, Anyone who meets a testing challenge head on and manages to stick it out is mighty, is mighty fortune. For such person persons loyally in love with God, the reward is life and more. I want to read it in the New King James Version. And it says in verse 12, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. When you endure and you make it through your struggles and your endurance grows, it is a blessing. It brings about blessings because you know what? You have overcome something that should have broken you down. You have overcome something that was meant to defeat you. You have managed to withstand. That's why James says overcoming endurance is a blessing. But what is endurance? Endurance is the ability to withstand hardship or adversity. Challenges are not easy. The challenges that we're going through, uh, through right now are not easy. Every day when you listen to the news, they talk about how many people are getting infections. That is a challenge, it's a struggle. To try and keep ourselves healthy, that's a struggle. That, require, that is hardship. When you hear that companies are retrenching, that is hardship, it's adversity. When you hear the, about the crime levels, that is hardship and adversity. But what it calls for is the ability to live your life and withstand such hardship and adversity. That is endurance. The possession of this quality of endurance is a virtue. You. Okay, And people who possess the quality of endurance are free from cowardice and despondency. What does it mean? You are not afraid. You are not afraid to confront the struggles of life and say, even though it may look gloomy, I will get through this by faith. You are not a coward to get through this stuff. You are not despondent. You are not beaten into resigning life. When you hear what's going on in the world, you must say, Father, you created the world and by faith I'm going to go through this because I, you have built in me some endurance through life and I want my endurance to, be even, to grow even stronger. I'm not despondent. I am active in my faith. I am active in my life. That's the quality of endurance. And endurance is mainly an attitude of the heart in respect of things. You see, endurance is not about muscles. You can see a strong man or a strong woman, but who happens to be a coward. Put them in front of challenges, they break down. 
It's a matter of the heart. You resolve in the heart that even though I can see what is in front of me, I am still going to press on because I have faith. It's a quality. That's the quality of endurance. There is a Lebanese proverb which says, he who wants to eat honey should enjoy the stings. He who wants to eat honey should enjoy the stings. Have you ever tried to, to get honey from a comb of, uh, surrounded by bees? You can't get to the honey until you get rid of the, of, of the bees. When we were growing up, we used all sorts of mechanisms to try and get rid of the bees in order to get to the honeycomb. And sometimes you'll get stung by the bees. And life is like that. Sometimes to get ahead and to experience the blessings and to get to some of the things that you're looking for, you've got to go through some testing times. And those testing times require your faith to grow. Those testing times require your endurance to grow. Child of God, you may have lost many things. You may have come into many problems. You may be facing numerous problems right now where you don't know what tomorrow holds for you. But I want to say by faith you'll get through it. By your endurance growing, you'll get through it. Remain in God. Circumstances and blessings in life there are circumstances and blessings in life which require you to undergo some challenges. They require you to go through some pressure in order to develop your endurance. So many people in the, in the Bible who had to go through challenging times, yet they were told they were blessed. You can count Joseph. He had to go through many trials and challenges in order to enjoy his blessings. You may look at David. He had to go through many challenges in order to get to enjoy his blessings. Those things, the challenges they faced, were meant to prepare them for the future that they, God had for them. So there are some blessings and some challenges which you, will require you to undergo struggles in life. But you should endure through that. And without the developed sense of endurance in your life, You'll be ill-prepared and ill-equipped for where you're going to. You'll be ill-prepared and ill-equipped for where you're going to. If you go, don't go through some of those challenges. Am I saying that we should be praying to get into trouble? No. But when you get into trouble, when you come under pressure, that is going to make you strong. Some of the challenges that we face are personal failings where we fail in faith. You commit sin, but just because you have committed sin, that is not the end of your life. You can get up and your endurance through the humiliation, through people looking down upon you, will get you through. Because God has a future for you. You should not die under pressure of the circumstances surrounding you. So sometimes the challenges we face and the pressure we face is meant to prepare us for where we are going to. That is why I say, in by the way, sometimes when people are interviewing for senior positions and they say they're looking for the CEO of a company, they will not take a freshman from university because a freshman from university has no reference for what it means to lead people and run a company that can make and sometimes lose money. They want experience because what? Through the experiences of running a business to succeed and fail, you are being trained, your faith is being trained, and your endurance. Jordan has been trained to run the business successfully in light of any circumstances. Child of God, if your things are failing right now, say to God, Father, I'm looking for the lesson I'm supposed to learn here. My faith is being built. My endurance is being built. If you have been in a failing relationships, you must say, Father, what am I supposed to learn about being in sound relationships? Your endurance is being built. Sometimes the pressure you're going through is meant to prepare you for where you are going to. And ask God to teach you what the lesson is through the experiences that you are going through. So pressure, under pressure, faith and endurance grows. Every blessing and the fruits of such blessing comes with a challenge. You must learn that as a child of God. Every blessing, even the fruits of such blessings, bring challenges. Temptation lies around every blessing you get, right? And the stretching then comes at that moment. You can think of many people who are blessed. Samson was blessed with massive strength, but him having the strength that he had, 
he had to learn to be humble and to respect the strength God had given him. And then he fell into trouble because that blessing was surrounded by challenges. So even when you pray and receive blessings from God, remember that the blessings come with challenges and you'll have to go through the challenges by faith and you, your endurance must develop through that situation. After, after blessings come the battle which requires endurance. Just as God is blessing you, the challenges come right after that. Whatever blessings God is bringing your way, there will be challenges which require your faith to grow and you to endure through that. And we see God warning Joshua in Joshua chapter 1. Let's go there. Joshua chapter 1, verse 7 to 8. God warns Joshua about the blessings he was giving him of leading the nation to the promised land. But then he also tells him that there are going to be challenges, but there is a cure for the challenges which he was going to face. In, in Joshua chapter 1, verse 7 to 8, it says, Only be strong and very courageous. Why would God say to Joshua, only be strong and very courageous when he's sending him and blessing him and anointing him to lead the nation of Israel? Because there would be challenges ahead of him. There would be battles he'll have to fight. There would be pressure he has to get into. But he says, be courageous even under pressure. Just like you and me, we ought to be courageous in our daily struggles. We ought to be courageous in the pressure we're facing. We ought to be, to, to, to be courageous even in the blood and sweat that we've got to go through in order to get to where we're going to. Sometimes just when you think things are going well, Things just break, fall apart. You lose people that you love. You lose friendships that you love. Just at the door of your blessings. But listen to what God says to Joshua. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand. Or he says, you know what? Be strong and courageous. Don't forget the word and the promises planted in your heart when you are going through troubling times. Stay on the word. Stay on those promises. Don't turn left or right so that you may prosper wherever you go, so that you may succeed. Don't give up when you're facing those challenges. Don't give up when you're facing delay to the breakthrough of your prayers. Don't, be, don't give up when you're facing delay, when you're waiting for the answer to come regarding whether the application you've made is going to be successful. Don't give up when your healing is being delayed because it's going to come. Stay on God's promises. Have faith and joy in the delays because you will break through. You will break through. Be courageous. Even in the struggle and the pressure of remaining where it is hot, you stay where God has said you must stand until he responds to you. It may be hot, but God is going to answer. Your faith is being built. You know, I always think about the story of those three Jewish boys who were in Babylon. They knew they were in the right. They knew they are God and they knew the promises of God. And then they were facing a challenging situation which was threatening their life. You know, God didn't rescue them just before they got into the fire. They had to stand there and believe under pressure that God is going to save them and believe under pressure that they are going to break through. And God didn't send anybody until the moment they were in the fire. Sometimes you'll be in the pressure. Sometimes you'll be in the challenging times and God will come in and save you and build your faith when you are in the fire. When you are in trouble, your faith is going to be built in that pressure. It's not going to be built outside. It's not going to build just at the door. It's going to be built in the pressure. And their faith afterwards in their God was built. Their endurance afterwards what they, was built after it matured. Because God is surely going to extend his hand to you. You see, God is more interested in the substance of, of your being. God is interested in your internal wiring. God is interested in the strength of your faith. Rather than getting somewhere, achieving things, and acquiring things. God is not really about you just getting somewhere, 
you know, uh, achieving something and acquiring things. He's interested in, in your faith. Is your faith strong enough for you to become a king? Because king he will make you, but he, you must be qualified to become a king. That's why he had to train Joseph to become what he was. Is Joseph strong enough to carry the dream that was re revealed to him when he was young? So he had to go through pressure and enjoy, and his faith had to grow. He had to go through prison. He had to go through slavery so that he could lead. David was blessed to be king when he was young. But at the moment when David was blessed, he was not qualified to become a king. And God was wanted to build David's inner resistance and spiritual strength. So he had to be a shepherd, kill a bear and a lion. So he had to go and kill Goliath. So he had to go and, and escape and learn from Saul. So he had to do so many things to qualify to be a king. Some of us want to want aspire for blessings before we are prepared. God will not bring about a shortcut in your life. The pressures and struggles you are going through are preparing you for where God is taking you to. That's why you must allow your faith to be built. That's why you must allow your endurance to be built. It's not a mistake that you and I are living at this time when the economy is not looking good, when the health system is not looking good, when our leaders are speaking in folk tongues, when our leaders are stealing money left, right, and center. It's not a mistake that you and I have to put up with it. There is a lesson for us to learn so that future generations may benefit from our leadership, so that our future, future generations may benefit from what God is teaching us. You and I will never fall into the same trap we are witnessing now because God is going to take us through this and will do better. Under pressure, faith and endurance are built. So, you see, the Lord wants to develop us. He wants to develop these virtues, fruits of the Spirit. You must read in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. The Lord intends for us to endure trials, not to fall. That's what James is saying. God says, I'm expecting you to endure trials and not to fall when you go through them. The Lord wants us to trust him to meet our needs. He says, if you need wisdom, ask me. Read in James chapter 1, verse 5 to 9. The Lord wants us to discern between good and bad. That's why he says he doesn't expect us to fail in temptation. He doesn't expect us to fail. He expects us to overcome temptation. That's why God was so confident that Job, who loves him so much, will not fall when tempted by the devil, will not fall apart when the devil afflicts him with pressure, will not fall when the devil brings misery, death, and sickness upon Job's life. Because God trusts him. You see, God trusts you and I to go through our struggles with endurance and overcome. As much as God is concerned about our spiritual maturity, he's also concerned about our practical, ethical life. We must live life practically. We must go through the pressures and be able to overcome them. A genuine faith must produce results in good works and in a lifestyle of overcoming. A genuine faith, when people look at us, they must say, what, what distinguishes a Christian from a non-Christian? It is what should distinguish us is that when we, are, when we approach and we have uh, problems and when we're under pressure, we go through them confidently because we have a faith and we learn through them. They must be surprised why we are singing around Jericho for seven days when we have no land. They must be surprised what we don't fight, but we sing and pray around our problems. And when we sing and pray, God begins to move and change the circumstances because we have faith and we have endurance built in our lives. So who you are, in whom you believe, and the principles and values that inform your life will be revealed under pressure. If you want to know what a person believes in or who they are, watch them under pressure. You must do a test and hope nobody beats you up. If you want to know what is really in a person's heart and who they look up to when they're under pressure, try to step on somebody's foot and hear what they say. Out of the mouth will come the most automatic and default position of who they cry out to. Some cry out to their mothers. Others will insult you. Others won't even talk. They'll just punch you. And that tells you what is inside. The true colors of faith show up when you are under pressure. This time, 
that we're going through, our faith is maturing, we're enduring. And the true colors of our faith are coming out. If you're not running away, you're not retreating from your faith, and you're saying, God, you're going to take me through, you're growing. Sometimes we face temptations under pressure. Some of us, when we're under pressure, we react in anger and in sin. Somebody steps on your foot, you know what to do, or somebody offends you and you say, I'm going to give you a good piece of my mind. Child of God, you don't have an option to give anybody a good piece of your mind. Remember what your God says. Sometimes he says, turn the other cheek, look like a fool, because I will avenge you. Other temptations we, we fall into when you're under pressure is we forget about Christ or God. You take matters into your own hands, especially if you believe that God is not acting fast enough. God is not acting fast enough. I am taking this under pressure. I'm going to do it myself. I'm not finding the job right now. I'm going to start stealing. That's taking matters into your own hand. Sometimes when you're under pressure, you deny Christ. Peter did that. Temptation lacks around when we're under pressure. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 41, Jesus says to the, to, the, to the disciples, keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus knew. He says to them, guys, keep praying because challenging times are coming. You need to, your faith and you need to grow. Keep praying for your inner strength so that you can, you can overcome the temptation. Sometimes we react when we are under pressure and may say or do the wrong thing. You see, when Peter was being questioned in Matthew chapter 26, verse 73 to 74, when he was being questioned whether he knew Christ, even though Christ had warned him, he denied Christ. Three times because he was under pressure to decide whether, to confirm whether he knew Christ or not. If he said he knew him, he was probably going to follow him. He was under pressure. And sometimes we resort to our natural instincts. Look at, you must see in Luke chapter 22, verse 48 to 50. As they are about to arrest Jesus, his disciples say to him, Hey, Lord, should we strike with the sword? And Jesus says, no, 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 no. You don't understand what's happening here. This is not a time for you to use your instinct. It is the time for you to dig deep into what I've planted into your life. And those who endure and who allow their faith to grow, in James chapter 1, verse 4, it says, when your endurance is fully developed, you'll be perfect. You'll be complete. You'll need nothing. Why does it say you'll be perfect? You'll be complete. You'll need nothing. Because as your faith grows, next time you are confronted with these similar challenges, you will not fall. You'll say, I've seen this before, and this is how God took me. You see, when David arrived in front of Goliath, he had already defeated the lion and the bear. When he was facing another enemy, he, he said to Saul, Saul, I don't need all of this armor that you are giving me. I do not need this sword that you are giving me. And when he got to Goliath, and Goliath says, what is this? Why are you coming to me carrying a stick and things like that? Am I a dog? And David says, you know what? The God I saw when I faced a lion, the God I saw when I faced a bear, is going to give me your head today. Why could David do that? Because David had a point of reference. Your struggles will make you perfect, complete, and needing nothing in the face of future challenges because under pressure, you have developed your faith and endurance. Take the present day struggles that we face as a training for where you are going to, the big things that God is calling you for. Because when you face new challenges, you shall refer to the victories that God has given you. Pressure builds your faith and endurance. And as I finish, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, it says, And let us run with endurance the race that God has set for us. Saints, our walk and our daily lives and our Christian lives are about living with endurance and faith. We don't crumble under pressure. And it's not to deny that we're under pressure, but it's to say, as we go through this pressure, we go through the pressure by faith. Child of God, this morning, I know it's not easy, but this is to remind you 
that you are not alone. This is to remind you that God is preparing and has prepared you to overcome. And you must want to overcome. And I want to pray this morning for people who are almost giving up because of the struggles. Your struggle may be about finding a job. Your struggle may be about the illness. Your struggle about may be about being broke, not having money. Your struggle may be about relationships that are chaotic and you can't see where you're going to. I want to say to you, God is building your faith and endurance. You will overcome so long as you stay in Him. It's not time for you to give up, to fold, because I believe God is preparing something, preparing you for the blessings He has ahead of you. And it's not time to give up. And there are others who have already given up. They say this Christian life doesn't solve anything. I want to start with those people and say, if you're saying, Fundisi, I actually want to tap into the source of this faith and endurance. I want to be reconciled with God. I want to give my life to God so that I can have a base for endurance and faith through struggles. Let me pray with you. You know what you do? You only confess with your mouth and believe in your heart and you'll be saved. I want to pray for you. So if you're saying, Mfundis, I want to give my life to God, let's pray this morning. Pray with me. Father, I thank you. Thank you for loving me and thank you for sending your son to the cross who died and rose again. Father, on the basis of his blood, I believe that I'm saved today. Lord, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. I will tell my friends and family that I now am a child of the living God who will support me through my struggles. If you pray that prayer, you're a child of God this morning. God bless you and we want to support you. You can reach out to us through our various communication channels at the end of this broadcast. We want to support you to grow into a strong and a resilient child of God. And if you don't have a, if you're not close to where we are, we would lie. We are very happy to refer you to a Bible-believing church. Let me pray for you, the rest of the saints, so that God can help you through the struggles of faith. Father, I pray this morning. I pray for my brothers and sisters who are going through many daily struggles. They may be going through a struggle of not having a job. Their businesses may be struggling. Their families may be falling apart. Their children may be given up to all manner of things. Father, I pray that you grow their faith under pressure. That, Lord, they shall grow in endurance. Lord, that they shall not give up. Father, may they dig deep into the promises you have given in your word and you have planted into our hearts to be able to overcome. Lord, may we have a testimony and a point of reference for future struggles and the blessings that we will get that when God is with us, we conquer and overcome. I pray for the growth of the spirit of endurance, for the quality of endurance, and for quality faith to grow in us. Thank you, God, for giving us a word of encouragement this morning. May the grace of God and the love of Jesus and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us this morning. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Amen.